Alrighty, what I've got here today is a little coil winder, just a very basic coil winder. We've got a single motor, little 17 frame servo motor. So your bobbin would be mounted on here and you'd guide the wire on by hand, okay? This is just a very basic coil winder where all it's got to do is turn this motor the required amount of turns for the uh, number of turns required on your inductor or transformer. So that's the motor setup. I've just put a 3D printed disc on it and painted a red dot so you can see it turning. So what we got for controls is an encoder or the push function. So over here on the display Uh, yes, you can see it. Yeah. We got it set for changing the number of counts in one step at a time. So currently it's set for 10 turns. Okay. So as I turn the encoder over here. You can see the number of steps changing like that. All right. Now, if I click it like that, it changes the number of steps to change to 10. Or we're talking turns. So 10 turns here, 10 turns there. Because you only want, you want an inductor or a transformer in complete turns. So you're not working natural steps. So that over there would be a hundred turns. All right. Another click and you're at a hundred. So you're changing the number of turns in hundreds. Click it again. That's 500 turns at a time. Click it again. That's a thousand turns at a time. And then back to one. So there we got 10 turns. All right. Now to start it, I've got this push button. So the screen shows run. So stop for two seconds and goes back to the count setting screen over there. So there you got your motor that turns. Now, in the code, it's sending out the pulse at a fixed frequency. And it's not using any axle or DC, so we're within the pull-in range of the stepper. So it just sends out a fixed um, pulse stream to the motor like that, in the speed. And that's a reasonable speed for winding, like that. So if I go back to 10, change it to 20 turns hit the button that's going to do 20 turns like that it shows run while it's winding and then when it's finished it says stop and two seconds later it goes back to the setting screen we are using an Arduino Uno revision 3 to control it and we are using this DF robot stepper driver which I've got set to the minimum current for this little stepper motor so it's running at 300 milliamps and I've got the micro stepping set to 32 uh, micro steps per step okay the controls to it I've just got permanent 5 volts on the enable signal over here and then we got the pulse input wired up so that is going to Pin 6 of the Arduino. Pin 8. Uh, yeah, pin 8 has got the start button. And then 2, 3 and 4 has got clock direction and the switch from the encoder wire to it over there. Let's have a look at the code. So there's four pages of code here. It's not a trivial exercise to write code for a coil winder. So you 
need two libraries y.h and liquid crystal i squared c.h because this displays i squared c so io wise clock pin 2 from the encoder direction pin 3 from the encoder switch pin 4 from the encoder start pin 8 step pin 6 direction pin 7 which i'm not using now by default when you reset this and the code powers up it starts off with um, 10 turns and step size set to 1 like that okay that last a high is count is the interrupt service routine for the encoder winding is false so we're not winding and long the button press time is zero now the steps per turn is 200 steps for a stepper times 32 micro steps so we've got 6400 pulses per revolution for the motor the last displayed turns is zero last displayed step size is zero the display is a 20 by 2 and the address is 27 set up your pins the inputs and the outputs we're also using the serial port for debugging so you got 9600 board LCD initialize backload on now for the encoder when you turn it we're using interrupts so we're attaching the clock pin and direction pin as interrupts for the interrupt service routine now the void for display turns comes next now while it's set like that you don't want it to flicker so only if I make a change to the encoder do you right to the screen okay so it's nice and steady so that's things you've got to think about with your user interface so only if the turns are changed do we write to the LCD okay page 2 so the next void is check for start button press so if stop pin is high so this button by default is at zero volts it's a normally open so when I push the button the input goes high it checks that it was a, a solid press so there's a 300 millisecond debounce and then it um, it calls the start winding routine the encoder button press to change step size if the switch pin is low button press time and more than um, the delay for re that you got to hold it down for the step size to change which is a second then it changes the step size then you got debounce as well so display turns set the cursor to zero we write turns the number of turns which are 20 turns over there then the step size we are changing steps of one turn at a time and then we display position 12 of line 1 whether it's running or stopped and here's the encoder service routine so we got clock pin and direction pin so if there'd been a change to the clock pin then it adds it counts based on step size selected whether it be 1, 10, 100, 500 or 1000 
if the direction pin has also changed and is negative then it subtracts from the number of turns you want and it also ensures that you can't enter less than one, one turn obviously all right page three we're halfway through the code and that's the last bit so it writes the updated value into the latest value so change step size routine you got the option of one ten hundred five hundred or a thousand and then your index is zero because this is an array so index over here is where it calls the number based on the index count zero print that's for debugging now we've got start winding if winding is false winding stopped else true display run before starting winding run winding started so that's it happening over there so here's where that here outputs the pulses to the stepper drive so if direction pin is high it sets that pin if needed so here's where it does the counting and then the number of steps per turn and how many steps it's going to do and then it writes step pin high 25 microseconds later low 25 microseconds high again so that's the frequency at which it's writing to the stepper motor when it's done that when uh, the number of counts that it has to output to there has reached the set value it exits this routine it sets one into false display stop clear set cursor to line zero position zero warning stop that's it over there warning stop and then two seconds later go back to the setting screen we're almost done with the code here so there's a two second delay display turns and that is a subroutine that it calls just like that and that is a code for the coil winder so you could use a HMI with a keypad for setting your number of turns that you want to do in this case this rotary encoder is very useful and just a push and a turn um, there's your push button to start the winding you need an uh, Uno revision 3 at least well any of the uh, Arduino products will do this job for that matter now obviously what it's doing to, to output this frequency smoothly is it's staying in a loop while it's doing this so there's no multitasking taking place so you can't change you can't display the number of turns that have elapsed while it's busy um, running the stepper because it's busy running the stepper at that stage okay you would need to have a processor that can multitask if you want to do that but for the basic coil winder this is fine there's my little stepper driver that's a DF robot stepper driver does the job quite nicely it's running off 24 volts got a little stepper motor over here at the current of 300 milliamps it's slightly warm to the touch so 
I could um, enable it only for Windy, but for what we're doing here, it's fine to just leave the current on on the motor. That's it, little coil wind. I'm going to wrap it up here. This has been a little bit of a, uh, a motion stuff project. Very simple. The the wiring is quite straightforward. The the code and the interface gets a little bit involved with a project like this. It's not trivial. But um, there you saw how I did it. Okay. I think that's it. Thanks for watching and uh, ladies and gentlemen have an awesome day further. Take care. See you next time for more stuff. Alright. Cheers.